Hey, this is Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, we're gonna talk about layout animations using Framer Motion and React. And by layout animations, we're talking about animating things like the size or the position of elements on your web page. Now, often these are expensive to do because they cause reflows on the page. So for example, if I wanna animate the width of an element, well, now the browser has to recalculate all the positions of the elements surrounding it. So Framer Motion gives us a really nice, simple way to achieve these animations. We're gonna jump into some code now, and we're gonna see how it works. So currently I have this layout component up. I'm calling it Simple Layout Animation, which is a pretty apt description for it, because all it is really is a box that gets toggled when clicking on this button. So we're going from initial dimensions of width and height of 100 pixels to width and height of 150 pixels. And at the moment, when we toggle, you can see that the animation is really abrupt. There's just a jump from one state to the next. So essentially here we have a change in layout. Even though there are no surrounding components or elements at the moment, the size or dimensions of this box are still changing from one state to the next. So let me show you perhaps the most declarative piece of code that you've ever seen, which is that if we simply come into our motion div right here and we add the word layout or the layout prop, now check out how automatically we get a nice transition there. And I think you'd admit that this is a lot slicker than what we had previously where it was just an abrupt change from one size to the next. And I go much deeper into these layout animations in my full frame or motion or motion course. I'm gonna leave a link for you down in the description in the comment section below. So what is this layout prop doing exactly? Well, as we've been talking about, animating things like width and height are generally not as performant as animating transforms and opacity. So frame or motion under the hood, it actually uses transforms to produce the same outcome or the same result. So we can write our code in this way to make changes to things like width and height, but behind the scenes, frame or motion will automatically do them in a much more performant way. And how cool is that? Now, an important thing to note is that frame or motion does these layout animations as a result of re-renders of your component. So let's take a further look at this component to see how we're setting state and updating state in order to re-render it. So let's look at our DOM elements first. We have a surrounding div, which is just used as a wrapper for the button and then the motion.div inside of it. And here you can see that its width and height are being set dynamically based on the size. So size is a piece of state that we created using React's use state hook. And we initialized it to a value of 100. So the initial starting values for the box are gonna be width 100, height of 100, and that's 100 pixels. Now, when the button gets clicked, that's gonna call the toggle size function. And inside of toggle size, we're calling set size to update the state. And we're using the ternary operator here to check if the size is equal to 100, right? Which is the initial state. So the first time we click the button, it's gonna say, yeah, size is equal to 100. So change it to 150. The next time the button's clicked, the state will have already been updated to 150. Therefore, this will be false and the button will toggle back to 100. Now each time the button clicks, the state gets updated, the component gets re-rendered, and therefore, using this layout prop, creates those automatic transitions for us. 